Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm doing a team guide of the most requested team that I haven't done yet, which is Borussia Dortmund. Of course, one of the most famous and popular teams on FIFA, known for their bright yellow kits, passionate fans and good young talent. Most famously, they've got Jadon Sancho and Erling Haaland up front, who are both 20 years old and both going to be mega stars for the next decade. So in this video, we'll go through the rest of the squad, get you up to date on who should sign, which areas are weak, who should maybe not sell because they're club heroes in the case of Marcel Schmelzer, and give you a good idea on how to play your Borussia Dortmund in a realistic and fun way. So let's get started. As always, spreadsheets on the screen, feel free to pause the video if you want to watch it and read through the whole thing, but it's fairly simple anyway. On the left we have the players who are in the squad sorted by their overall rating and on the right we have a little formula I made to show me where the weak players are in the team. In this example you can see that left back, right back and striker are the weak points but as always we'll take that with a grain of salt and use our own judgement because we probably couldn't say that Erling Haaland is a weak point of this Borussia Dortmund team. What it has done though is highlight an area we do need to look at which is striker. So in a way it's worked because the only backup to Erling Haaland naturally is Stefan Tigges, who's a 64 overall player with 70 potential. Definitely you're going to need a backup striker here, but it's going to be up to you if you're going to retrain someone like Marco Royce to play striker, or if you're going to go out and get that big name backup that Dortmund attempted to do in real life. Anyway, starting from the top of the position table, goalkeeper. Current goalkeeper is Roman Berkey. He's a very good goalkeeper for the Bundesliga, mid 80s rated, but the Bundesliga definitely does have better goalkeepers. I wouldn't worry too much about replacing him yet, he's young for a goalkeeper at 29 and fairly good talent as well. Left back however, could be a weak point. Rafael Guerrero is a good left back, your next best is Nico Schultz who is quite a bit worse in case of an injury and then after that you have Marcel Smeltzer who's bringing this numbers down. Marcel Smeltzer has been with Dortmund since 2005 when he came through as a youth academy player. It would be unfair to sell him at this point in his career so I would let him retire with you. The further forward players Nico Schultz and Rafael Guerrero are both good enough so we won't actually consider replacing either of those. Centre back is boosted by Mats Hummels being an 87 overall and though he's 31 this will start decreasing pretty soon. After him you have Dan Axel Zagadou and Manuel Akanji who are both going to be really good players. Akanji has a few years on Zagadou but they're both currently starting on the same overall. Zagadou definitely has potential to be much better than Akanji but playing both of them will be a pretty interesting combination there. The only other right back in the team is Lukas Pizjek, who again is a player who's been very loyal to Borussia Dortmund, so I wouldn't consider selling him. He also works as good cover to our next position we're going to look at, right back. So at right back, the best current player is Thomas Meunier, who recently joined from PSG. He's the only right back in the league other than Mathieu Murray, who at 20 years old is going to have potential to be a bit better than Meunier is now. Balancing game time between Thomas Meunier and Mathieu Murray will be key to getting him to develop pretty high, pretty fast. So I would definitely recommend you play Murray at least in the weaker teams and the cup games. Moving up the pitch to central defence midfield, we have Axel Witzel and Thomas Delaney anchoring our midfield. These are the only two players in the team that are natural at CDM, but you could play Jude Bellingham there as a more of a playmaker defensive midfield, or Mahmoud Dahoud as more of a box-to-box -box defensive midfielder. Emre Shan can also play defensive midfield, so you can see you've got a lot of cover from a lot of very good players here, and you say the same for central midfield because all of these can play both of those positions. Right midfield is a lot better covered than left midfield, but Thorgan Hazard is not a bad left winger either. If you don't like playing with Hazard, you're probably going to have to play Royce there as he's the only other natural left winger in the team, but you could also possibly retrain Jadon Sancho and sign another right midfielder. The only other right midfielder in the team is Felix Paslak, who's got potential to be pretty poor for this level of team and his overall is only a 69 overall, so you're going to want to probably sign a backup right midfielder. At attacking midfield, you also have quite a lot of good options, Marco Royce being the key one, but also Julian Brandt and Giovanni Reina all both having the potential to be just as good as Royce starts off with. Jadon Sancho again could be retrained to play here as could Thorgan Hazard and you could even play Jude Bellingham here if you retrain him pretty quickly. 
At striker, you've of course got Erling Haaland, and as previously mentioned, Stefan Thiers is the only other striker. So you're definitely going to want to look at the striker position. And that's what I'm going to do now, where I'm going to suggest you a new goalkeeper option, central defence option, right back option, and striker options. So let's begin with the most fun one to sign a player for, striker. So who have Borussia Dortmund been looking at in real life. So they've been looking at Olivier Giroud actually, as well as Hoffenheim's Israeli striker, Munas Dabur. Both of these would be interesting signings in different ways, but if you want to go for a real backup striker, look no further than former Stoke and Newcastle striker, Hozalou. Of these three strikers, he's definitely the most likely to agree to be a backup to Erling Haaland, and all three of these strikers actually play in a similar physical way to how Erling Haaland likes to boss his way through defences. So yeah, definitely consider having a look at Giroud if you want a slow target man, Dabor if you want someone a bit more mobile, or Hozalu if you want someone who'd be happy to be a backup and not complain. Moving back to centre-back, Borussia Dortmund do have a pretty good strong set of players already, but if you want a fourth choice option to replace Pizcek, or maybe you want Pizcek to cover the right back position that we're going to mention in a second, who should you go for? Well, you've got Hummels who's obviously going to be your first choice unless he's a bit too slow for you, in which case Hummels will be a more than adequate backup for when Zegadu or Akanji get hurt, but the fourth choice centre back is quite an interesting one. Of course Pizcek can also play there as we've mentioned before, but you're going to want someone who's either really young and talented to be even better than Zagadou or Akanji, or you're going to want someone old who can definitely cover themselves in glory when they do need to step in, a bit like Hummels can. My personal first choice would be going for Josko Gvardiol at Dinamo Zagreb, as a Croatian young 18-year-old centre-back has the potential to be really good if he can make it to that level. You could also go for someone like Ben White if you want to spend a lot more money, but there is good young English talent already in this Dortmund team, so it wouldn't be too out of the odds for them to go for him. Finally, Armel Bella Kotchap from VFL Bochum is another decent choice. He's got tons of potential, he's quick, he's not going to be too expensive in the first season with a release clause of just 6.5 million euros, and he has the best model build for a centre-back on FIFA this year, in my opinion, which is the stocky build. It makes him so much larger on the screen and it's hard for the AI to get past him. 85 strength, 80 sprint speed, 75 jumping, good defensive standing tackle and interceptions mean he's going to be a breeze to develop. As well as being German and having a 5 star weak foot, he's just the ideal backup 4th choice centre back and I recommend you have a look into him no matter who you're playing as. Honestly, he would also perform pretty well at right back which is the next position we're going to have a look at now. The young Spaniard Matteo Murray is already your second choice right back, despite him only having 70 overall. So you're going to want to have someone else to back up Thomas Mounier when he gets hurt. Don't get me wrong, Mounier is a very good right back, but until Murray hits his development peak, he's not going to be good enough to back up for Thomas Mounier. So who are the options to back up Mounier? As previously mentioned, you could get the centre back and retrain him, but you could also go for someone like Tariq Lamptey at Brighton and Hove Albion to join the English Revolution. Maybe Gonzalo Montiel from River Plate, who's going to have a load of pace if you want a faster fullback. Or you could just accept that Lucas Piszczek is a more than good enough third choice or second choice right back, depending on how well Murray develops, and just use him until he retires. Moving to the final position we're going to look at quickly is goalkeeper. So, Roman Berkey has been Dortmund's first choice goalkeeper since the summer of 2015. The Swiss international has turned down his country in order to focus on form for Dortmund. This is a promising sign of course, and it proves how loyal he is. But there is always a chance you could improve. Real Sociedad's Alex Romero has been a very good goalkeeper this season, and he's probably the best goalkeeper to have not been capped by his country in the whole of the world. You could also help Dortmund's image in United States by getting Zach Stefan to be your backup goalkeeper. I know firsthand that Zach Stefan can be a very good goalkeeper when trained right. His reflexes are already really high and you only need to watch one of the World Cup games that I did on my channel recently with the USA to prove how good he can be. He stops anything. It's actually better than some of the legends that I've used on Ultimate Team. I really highly recommend Zach Stefan if you do want a backup goalkeeper. Anyway, that's my view on the Dortmund squad, and if you are a Dortmund fan, because I know quite a lot of you are, then do let me know how I got on with this analysis. 
Let me know if there's any signings that you think Dortmund will go for this season because it'd be interesting for me and for every single person who's considering doing this save to hear it straight from a Borussia Dortmund fan. If you want me to do a team guide on any other team, drop it in the comments below and I'll consider it for the next batch of these that I record. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.